Okay, my YouTubers, so the question that I get asked usually the most is, do supplements really matter? Let's dive into that. Okay, so happy Sunday, or excuse me, happy Saturday. <laughs> the last video was on Sunday. Um, let me, before we get into supplements, let me tell you guys some of what I've been eating to give you an idea. Now, if you want to, I'm not going to obviously tailor a program, but I'm saying if you like some of these things and maybe they're not incorporated in your nutrition plan, then maybe try those. Um, because the one thing is you really want to maximize your protein intake for one because the goal is to build muscle so the more muscle you have the more your body is going to operate to burn fat even when you're at rest so okay so my protein sources um, what I do with my fish okay so I have tilapia set up here and um, typically I stick with pretty much fish ground turkey ground chicken and every once in a while, I may sprinkle in a little bit of ground beef, 96%, 4% lean, and eggs. So, and whole eggs, not just like egg whites, because you do need the yolk. You need some of those healthy fats in the yolk. So you do have to remember to keep some of the yolks in there. You can still mix in egg whites if you want, but don't forget to do the, the uh, yolks. And as you can see with my tilapia, and this is what I typically do with all my fish, I usually go with tilapia, which is a bottom feeder, I know, but it is cheaper. Um, I also use salmon, which I have some of that in the freezer. I also use uh, sometimes cod. I do swai fish and sometimes catfish. So you have a wide range that you can pick from when it comes to fish, but I like to blacken mine. So if you don't have these items, these items here, to blacken your fish, it, it's one of those things where you won't have to worry about seasoning your food. Because one of the things as a competitor that, that I try to make sure I monitor a little bit is sodium intake. So in order to minimize some of that is to pre-season, that eliminates you seasoning when it's time to eat the food. You know, foods can be a little bit bland, especially for a competitor. So it's good to find things like, I do, I, I do use a lot of, uh, Mrs. Dash and I try to mix it up and use like different different flavors of Mrs. Dash Just to reduce down some of my sodium, but yet it eliminates the food from being so dry and so bland uh, Now this is just one step another thing that I use is asparagus because uh, I, I do a lot of low carbs For for my heavier carbs. I'll stick with like jasmine rice and let me show you guys some of this so that way at least you have an idea but Okay, so in my pantry, you know, I have tuna, I have, um, I have potatoes, and, and, and everything's usually microwavable, and it's just because I like to be, I like to keep things portable. So I have these red potatoes, and then I have the jasmine rice, and I also have, if I can find one of those, yeah. The figures I should have been more prepared I should have set this stuff out so you guys could 
so you could already see. But this is the other one, the uh, quinoa and brown rice. And I try to just kind of mix those in. Now you're looking at about 45 to 50 grams of carbs per serving. So one of those cups. And then I also like to use oatmeal, but I do the steel cut oatmeal and you can go either way. You can get that instant or you can do the, the full route depending on what you want. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out one of these other things because this is a key supplement as I'm now, you know, a lot closer to the show. I'm a little bit over a month out. Um, so as far as like supplementation, this Animal Cuts has done well for me in the past. So I'm going to utilize that to help me with maximizing my fat loss. Now, that question that I brought up at first was, do you need supplements? The answer to that is no. Now, are they, are they helpful? Yes, uh, just because it depends on your lifestyle. Now, you, you can't outrun a good nutrition plan. So just keep that in mind that you can work out all day long, but to accomplish your goals to the max, you really need to incorporate a good nutrition plan. And, and I talked about that in the last video as far as like uh, caloric deficit and things of that sort. Um, but I like to use that because it also has what is called a water pill in there to help soak up some of the water intake because I'll be consuming a lot more water probably than the average person. So I'll take in roughly a gallon and a half to two gallons a day. And as I get closer to the show, I'll even increase that. And then as I get really close, then I'll start pulling back some of that water. So that's one of the supplements I take as far as a fat burner goes. Now, as far as like branched chain amino acids, creatine, Branched chain amino acids you can get in in, uh, in your foods. So not really worry about it. Creatine you can actually get into your food, into, into meats. You can get creatine in there. Now, I like to take a creatine supplement because it's also a muscle builder, which, as I mentioned earlier, is the key also to burning fat. So if, if, if you're looking for a, a one-hit wonder, creatine is one of the most researched supplements out there and one of the most proven supplements. So... If I were to give a recommendation, I would say use it. And uh, you only need to take, you know, five to 10 grams a day. So really one to two scoops a day. So it's not like you're constantly taking it and you can just mix it into your shakes. You can mix it into your oatmeal. The other thing is protein powder. So protein powder, again, do you need it? No, because you can get your protein from food. And that's what I'm saying. You can't outrun a good diet. So you, so protein, I would, if you were to give me a recommendation, let's say you're on a budget, I would stick with whole foods because your body, it takes your body uh, energy to process food. And you know that you're getting all natural, whereas some of these protein powders, you're not sure what you're going to get. However, they are good because they absorb quickly. So like post-workout, you can get in your protein amount and you can go a little bit higher protein amount, say 50 grams, because you have to eat a decent amount of food to equate to, you know, say it's 200, 150 grams of protein per day or whatever the case may be, whatever your macro numbers are. But I like to stick with an ISO. The reason being it's low fat and it's low sugar. Dimatize has been my go-to. I'm not sponsored through them or anything like that. They have been my go-to protein since I started uh, competing back in 2015. However, since I do kind of work for, in a sense, a protein company, or excuse me, a supplement company, I also utilize Combat Nutris Protein as well. And this is the, that was vanilla. This is the vanilla cupcake batter. Um, so, and there's the same, it's pretty low fat, but because, like I said, because of my show, I am sticking primarily to the Dimatize, but that one's also a good protein. I'll put uh, I'll put their information down at the bottom so you guys, if you wanna order uh, Combat Nutra. I, I thought I had a code, I'm not sure if I still do or not. <laughs> but anyway, you can check it out and see what you think because they also have other stuff. They do have fat burners. I tried their fat burner and, uh, and it was pretty good, but I'm just going back to my roots on what I know has been effective for me in the past. Now, talking about vegetables, I talked about asparagus. I do broccoli. Um, I'll show you guys, and I do have some junk in my fridge too, and that's for more for uh, post-show. <laughs> but um, what I have in here, as you guys can see my freezer, 
is I do have these flapjacks, um, these protein packs, the Kodiak cakes, pretty popular. Um, but those are just on occasion. I may not mess with them right now, but I was eating those a little bit pre. But I have green beans in here, I have Brussels sprouts, and I have broccoli. So those have been my go-to veggies along with asparagus and kale. And I have that stuff in the fridge. And what I'll do is like I'll take and I will use these, the skillets, and I'll cook up my asparagus. I'll chop it up. I'll put it in the skillets with garlic and sometimes onions. I'll do red and yellow peppers. And I will cook all of that first. And then I'll add in, say, my ground turkey or my ground chicken, depending on what it is, or ground beef. But I like to mix all of mine together. But asparagus is another good one for for fat burning if that's your goal. Um, so that that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it's bland. It's the same things for me, but that's only because it's easier for me to keep track of what I'm eating if I stick with the same foods. And I actually enjoy them. Like by blackening my fish and by adding in like garlic and some of those Mrs. Dash seasonings to my food when I cook it, it eliminates, you know, me trying to like, get a craving for fast food or things of that sort so you want to keep it simple you want to keep it to something that you can stay with remember we talked about consistency in the previous video you want things to be consistent just keep that in mind and then there's nothing wrong with giving yourself like a cheat day you know i keep some stuff in my freezer and some stuff around the house that i enjoy Reese cups gummy bears those things i really enjoy and every once in a while I may nibble at some, but you, the thing is you can't do it every day. You can't do it all the time if you want to accomplish your goals in the end. So that takes some sacrifice. So you have to take some sacrifice, you know, with that commitment. And then once you get to your goals, now you can, you know, exercise a lot, a little bit more flexible dieting or flexible eating. I hate using the word diet, but um, yeah, that's, that's really the key to this is like I said, being consistent, you know, if and we talked about it in the previous video, lay out your goals. So lay out what your meal plan is going to be. Make sure it matches either your calories or your macro balance. Those two key things. And then every four weeks, check progress. If you're not progressing the way you want, then make some tweaks. Maybe you need to go to more of a deficit. Instead of taking 300 calories off, take, you know, 400 or something like that. You know what I mean? Just reduce down. Uh, the amount and see how your body responds, maybe up your cardio, you know, that that's those are critical things to adjust when you're trying to accomplish a goal. So, but I just wanted to make sure I gave you guys a run through as far as how I'm eating. Now, one other last thing, the last thing, because I see that the video is getting a little long. <laughs> I want to try to keep this under 15 minutes. The last thing is I am doing carb cycling. Now, I, in the past, when I was competing, competing a couple years ago, I started intermittent fasting and I've still been doing intermittent fasting here, or there, but I think my body started getting used to it. So my body was not responding to it as well as it did before. And then there was days where I was not very consistent with it. You know, I was taking my coffee and I was adding creamer in there sometimes, sugar in there. So I wasn't being as consistent as I was before when I, when I was first, when I was first introduced to it and when I first started doing it. So, but for this particular show and this particular prep, which you don't have to be competing to do this, is the carb cycle. Now, when we start talking about carb cycle, for those that don't know, what I typically do is I will say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Monday and Tuesday, I'll do like a low carb day. Maybe I'll have 50 to 100 grams of carbs per day. And then on maybe Wednesday, I go zero carbs. So it's all like vegetables. So no rice, no potatoes, no oatmeal. And I'll stick to just strictly vegetables. And then on Thursday is a high carb day. So then I'll jump it up to maybe 300 grams, 400 grams and taking a high day. The, the thing is, it gets your body kind of used to the low and then bumping up the high. But just one thing, too, to think about when you do that high carb day, put it on a day that you're working a heavy or excuse me, you're working a bigger body part, say back, legs. That's when you do your heavy carb day. Don't do it on a day of rest like say it's just your rest day and it's a sunday or whatever the case don't do a high carb day that day don't do your cheat day on that day do your cheat day do your high carbs on days that you are lifting on a big body part because you'll burn that you'll burn it up use it as fuel you'll notice like your strength will be probably higher your energy will be higher 
So it's good to take advantage of that. And then you restart that cycle. So now, since you did high carb on Thursday, go back to what you started on Monday and just keep that cycle. And then, you know, see, see where you're at. Like I said, go four weeks, see where you're at. It also helps with sanity. You got to keep your sanity. When you're on low carb, sometimes you get brain fog. Sometimes you are not motivated, you know, so it's good to incorporate the high carb day just to keep some sanity and a cheat day to keep some sanity and to keep you from binging, to keep you from going off the deep end. Because if you go too long and then you have that pizza or whatever, you may splurge uh, and then it starts to affect you mentally because you're like, oh, that was so amazing, that pizza. I want more and more. And you start giving yourself excuses on why you can have it and things of that sort. So just some tips. I used to say amateur tips, but I guess now I'm a pro. I don't know if they're pro tips or not. It doesn't matter if you're pro or amateur. These are just tips that I've learned along the way. These are tr tried and true to me. And remember I said it should be specific for you. So this is where you have to take the time to feel it out and see what type of results you can get. But consistency, consistent, I can't stress that enough, is to be consistent, be true, be honest with yourself as far as you stick into it. And, you know, you can have a coach, right? But the coach doesn't live with you. So the coach can give you a meal plan and things of that sort. And I'm not knocking any coaches. By all means, if you can afford to have one, do it. Because it's also giving you someone that also is going to hold you accountable. Or if you have a spouse or husband or, excuse me, boyfriend and girlfriend, they can hold you accountable. And those things are good. Have friends that also can hold you accountable. Let them know what your goals are. And they can ask you about it. You know, true friends will ask, how's your training going? How's your nutrition going? Blah, blah, blah. We all need that. Okay? So, all right. I don't want to take this video too long. Thank you guys for joining me. I said I want to be more consistent. And I hope that some of these tips helped you guys so you can see. And I will continue to get more content out there. Hopefully, I can get some more workout stuff outside of just like abs and cardio, obviously. And um, if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything like that, please feel free to add, subscribe, share, all of that stuff. Hit me on Instagram. My Instagram is D00, D0060. And hit me in the DMs, whatever the case may be. My, my um, page is open, not private. And I will definitely, um, you know, respond with the best that I... And if I don't know the answer, then I will direct you to somewhere that can help you with the answer. Um, or I'll research it myself. So, but have an amazing Saturday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Be humble. Be optimistic. Stay positive. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. All right, fam. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I forgot real quick. I know I closed the video out, but I'm going to reopen it because it's my channel. <laughs> but anyway, I totally forgot, which is super important, is fats. Make sure that you get in good fats. Now, I typically go with just avocados. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because on those low carb days, when I talked about the brain fog and things of that sort, one thing that you can do, which is a good thing to do, is to throw in fats to make up for the low carbs because you're, you still need some energy to, you know, to function and your body needs carbs to function. So that's why you never want to like completely go no carbs, but it's good to, mac, uh, to mix in the fats. So what I typically do is I'll take my avocado and I will cut it up. I'll either put it in shakes or I will cut up and put it into my meals. And, um, and I also do a lot of nuts. I do pistachios, cashews, almonds, and I'll, I'll take little snack packs of those. And sometimes I'll munch on those a little bit um, just to, like I say, compensate for the low carbs. So just another thing, I, I, didn't, I did not want to leave this video without mentioning that because it's so important. I know I talked about it for the eggs, but it's super, super important that you guys get the fats in and keep the fats at a pretty decent level. To, to, to balance out for the low carbs. So thank you again. And uh, again, we will uh, catch up in the next video. Thank you. Peace.